Hey y'all, and welcome back to the Cajun Country Living Guest Bathroom. We are continuing on today with this guest bathroom, and we only have a few steps left. Now they are big steps, and they're gonna make a huge difference in here, but we only have those few last steps to complete this entire room. And that'll be one more room checked off the list. Now last week, Lydia got in here and repaired that piece of broke tile and finished tiling all the way up to the wall. When she did that, like we have previously mentioned, it completely changed our ideas on how we wanted to design this built-in vanity. At first, we were gonna do the open shelf along the bottom. That way, underneath that vanity, you would have seen just the bottom of just the vanity. So it would have just been the open shelf concept. And then we talked about doing just drawers all the way down or maybe just some cabinets completely filling in the area, kind of like we did in the kitchen, but... Whenever I saw that floor, I knew that we had to do some type of floating vanity. We didn't tell y'all last episode of what we were gonna be doing, but a lot of y'all guessed it and you are correct. So I know a lot of y'all are excited to get this project going and so are we. Now, as y'all know, we are not cabinet builders. We muddled through our kitchen cabinets up to this point and I think we've done a halfway decent job on them. But this is gonna- They look really, really <laughs> nice. I think you did such a good job on those. You don't give yourself enough credit for those for sure. You always see your own mistakes, you know? But in here, it's gonna be kind of the same situation. We're gonna be dealing with some odd angles because it's not just gonna be a straight vanity. We have a sink that's gonna be landing in the corner, some other things that we're gonna be doing to brace it. And those are things that we're just gonna have to learn on the fly. Okay, well. Amateurs take on, once again, another cabinet job. <laughs> I'm going to get to it. Y'all, there's always so much going on behind the scenes here at Cajun Country Living. And one of the things that we have not got a chance to tell y'all yet is that actually while we're doing our bathroom right now, we're remodeling Jim's mom and dad's bathroom. So today I'm gonna to show y'all, just because you're remodeling, you do not have to buy brand new. And that brings us into today's sponsor, DeWill. DeWill knows how much just a simple coat of paint can revive and refresh any piece of furniture, or in our case, a sink. And that's why they've made it their mission to create paint products that are not only easy to use, but also safe and environmentally friendly. Here we have my mother-in-law's sink, and as y'all can see, I could probably get a decent scrubber and try to scrub most of this up, but as y'all know, whenever you have something for many, many years, it just gets stains on it that even the cleanest people can't keep clean. Today we're going to be using DeWill's Tub and Tile Paint. Their all-inclusive tub and tile refinishing kit provides essential tools for both beginners and experienced individuals. With user-friendly design and easy operation, their bathtub kit ensures anyone to successfully complete construction projects for home improvement or commercial purposes. Now, as y'all can tell, it is a beautiful day down here in Southern Louisiana, so I am doing this outside, but that does not mean that you have to. This tub and tile kit actually has a low odor and low VOC. This makes it ideal for indoor paint projects and it reduces the discomfort caused by strong paint odors. Dual sink paint is formulated with high quality acrylic resin for exceptional durability and resistance to flaking. It adheres firmly to tile surfaces, prevents peeling or chipping, so you can enjoy long lasting, beautiful tiles that maintain their appearance even in high moisture environments like the bathroom. The quicker drying time also minimizes the chance of dust or debris sticking to the wet paint surface. This tile paint will cure in 24 hours and leave it for seven days to dry completely. With faster drying, you can enjoy your newly painted space or use your furniture sooner. Now I did choose white for my mother-in-law's sink, but that is not the only option that DeWill offers. They have a wide range of colors and finishes, providing design flexibility for various surfaces in bathrooms. It is suitable for bathtubs, sink, countertops, floors, and walls, both indoor and out. Now y'all, here are the before and afters. I did follow exactly the easy step-by-step -step guide. I did do two coats on this and waited two hours in between. Well, now, like I said, to have a nice remodel, you do not have to go buy something new and DeWill can prove that over and over again. So y'all make sure to head down to the description and check out all of DeWill's products and thank you DeWill for sponsoring this video. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out where the top of this vanity is gonna live. That's gonna tell me the relation of how the top of this vanity is gonna end up looking against these outlets. Now, when we put these outlets in, a lot of things that we did in these areas where we weren't sure about if there was a standard, if there was an average height, whatever, we just kind of put it where we thought it was gonna go. And so far, we've really lucked out in all the other areas of the house. As y'all can tell, the sheetrock around these outlets and the sheetrock in the entire bathroom is not as flat as we would have typically got it. 
but I did go ahead and paint over that, primed all these walls, got them ready to go. And that is because these walls actually don't need to be perfectly flat. And that is because we are going to be adding in some subway green tiles. Now I know we always get a lot of comments on, are you sure you want to do that? Is that color going to go good? Are you going to like that in a few years? You know what? I guess if I don't like it, we can just take it out and try her again. So <laughs> these are going to be on the wall, sort of, kind of like that, you know. Those are only going to go up a few feet. And then on the rest of the wall, might as well go ahead and stick with the Louisiana alligator theme and show you all what Jen and Teddy sent to us. A few weeks ago, I tried to order this and for some reason it would not ship to my house. So thankfully they were able to send it to us. So I sent it to them. Then they send it down here. So this has been all over the United States. What else screams Louisiana than having an alligator on your floor, alligator print tiles, and herrings on your wall? Do you know, honey? Is that pickled herring? So this is the cliffhanger that we left y'all with the other day that Jen and Teddy were going to send us. And I am so excited to get this up, but we have got to get this vanity put in place and build out this area before I can start putting all this in. So soon. Wait, I think it should go better like that. Like this? Yeah. yeah. Now that is a conversation piece. Everybody'd be like, hey, is that herrings or are those some kind of bats? <laughs> Where we are gonna be putting this wallpaper, obviously we have flattened the walls in those areas, but if y'all do notice a few spots, it is just gonna be where the tile goes. So y'all bear with us start up this vanity and then hopefully hopefully soon we can get this wallpaper put up here's a really important question for you how wide are we going to make the vanity that is an excellent question and it's also a question that i don't have an answer to <laughs> just like everything else i think we're just going to kind of build this thing to site so we'll take the measurements as we go see what's going to fit what's going to work in this space and just build out from there so what we're going to start out doing is we're going to land a two by four all the way across that wall screw it into the studs to make sure that it's nice and level and we have a really bulletproof anchor point to mount this thing to the wall well jim's getting the saw set up i'm going to go ahead and find all these studs that way whenever he comes back we can just screw everything know exactly where we need to be putting this vanity in even though it is just a vanity we do want to be able to in a sense be able to sit on this vanity and have no issues no weight problems so we definitely need to be screwing this into some studs one thing we're going to have to work around is we have eight foot lumber and this is a 10 foot wall we're going to go ahead and measure this see where it lays out and we're going to have to use the buddy system on one of these studs so one of these boards is going to have to stop right even with the stud and the other one's going to have to pick up that way we can screw both ends into the same stud because like lydia said i know her and it's going to be some point in time that she's going to sit on top of this thing and i do not want it to crash and fall and hit this tile you don't want the vanity to crash and hit and fall the tile or do you not That's want me to fall and hit the tile it's going to be a two for one I wouldn't want you to hit the floor and I wouldn't want vanity to hit the floor. So. Nice save. Continue. <laughs> Let's do 86 and then we can pull the board away from that corner because I know that sheetrock mud is built up a little in that corner. That should fall out with plenty of room to get a screw in this. Don't you think? As long as our vanity doesn't fall, you know, while I'm sitting on it, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> We've had sunshine. We've had thunderstorms, we've had hail, hail the size of golf balls, and then we had ice, and then in two days it's going to be 70 degrees. So, what a roller coaster! What a roller coaster ride! There's an icicle still hanging on the truck. Okay, now we've been out here for a little while, now I'm getting cold. <laughs> <laughs> so 
store-bought lumber at its best. <laughs> it adds character. Good old Connaught. If you notice that Jim only put one screw in the top of this 2x4, it's because we need to go to the store and get some more 3-inch screws, so we're just using the 3-inch screws that we have right now and just putting one in each spot, but we are going to go back and put another 3-inch screw underneath the ones that are already there. Nope. I want to do it just like this. <laughs> you know those movies where they're like, this is how you swing a golf ball. A golf ball. <laughs> See how often we go golfing. This is how you swing a club. Like golf that. and listen. But it's like, at this stage, you insert your screen. So the distance this board needs to go is going to be 13 inches. Perfect. Measurements compute. Jim said that he was going to run out here to go cut this piece, and it was like five minutes later. And I was thinking, what is taking you so long to cut that one piece? But little did I know we're getting fancy with the cuts here. Let me show you. That does not look like an amateur job. That looks <sighs> like pro carpentry cabinet work going on. I wouldn't go that far. I just free-handed the puzzle piece is all I did. But it does fit. This side, we are just gonna run a little bit random. That way we have a little bit of extra and we can always cut that off because we do have our sink here, but we need to get it out, set it up there and really see what we have going on lengthwise and how we want the top of the vanity to fall out with the sink. So we're just gonna run it random for now and figure all those details out later. Another little detail thing that we did and we put this little piece in is we actually sloped it just a hair. I'm gonna show you all with the laser level right here, but as you can see, we did slope that away from the wall. That way, in case any water was spilt, any types of liquids, anything would roll, it would roll and fall off towards the open side rather than against the wall. This is just one of those little things that we learned whenever we did the cabinets in the kitchen. They do not have that little slope on them. We wish that we would have thought about that at the time, but you live and learn, and now we can use this knowledge in the bathrooms. Are you lonely over there without your instructor? Your drill instructor? <laughs> no, what I normally am is what I'm feeling right now, and that's confused. You always, I don't know if everybody does that, but I second guess myself constantly on am I forgetting something that's going to bother me down the road? I don't know. I guess we'll see when we get down the road. So now that we have the structure where it's going to live on the wall, we're going to go cut some blocks to put into this span so we can put this outside band on it. And then we're going to start working into matter in that corner and get ready for the sink. What you doing, lad? <laughs> I think it should go the other way. You think daddy will like it? Yeah. <laughs> Are they like daddy's Crocs? Are they like your Crocs? 
Jim's outside cutting this first bracing that we're going to be putting in. And lucky for me, I had to write an IOU to my father-in-law. He ended up having some of these three and a half inch screws. The only bad thing about living in the country is to run to the store. It ends up being like a half day process. So luckily for us, he ended up having some. Ran over there, got these three and a half inch screws. They're a little bit longer than what we were using prior. Those were three inch, but it's not gonna be a big deal. That half inch is not gonna make any difference at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these drilled, go ahead and put these screws in, and that way we're ready for the bracing. So now we've come to the part to where we have to figure out exactly how we want to miter in this corner sink. And being as we have zero idea what we're doing, we're going to have to actually take the sink, set it up there, and look at it, get a feel for what we actually want. Looking more on the lines of like something like right in here. And then putting our cross piece at the same angle that the sink is going to come out on don't like it being this far out we can always shift it keep shifting it further towards the wall till we get the angle right why do we always do this we always come up with these weird ideas and we spend twice as much time trying to calculate and figure rather than just doing the work <laughs> we've been standing here for a few minutes trying to figure out exactly how, how far away from the wall that we want the sink to sit and overall we decided around four four and a half inches and how we wanted the vanity to sit so as you can see, Jim's holding this right here, and... <laughs> this is the most rudimentary looking pile of scrap metal, head scratching. I just don't even know what's going on. Look, concrete covered. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, I say this all the time, but I would really love to know what goes through like, you know, because we have some really good craftsmen that watch our show, and just to know at that moment what's going through their mind when they watch us do this stuff i would love to know we are going to follow that vanity line it's going to go across here and then cut over to match the angle of the sink that's our hope anyway i think the biggest thing with me is is making sure the spacing is right around the sink and making sure just nothing doesn't make sense if we would have left this part running long and random that would have looked horrible. It don't match anything. You know, everything, this would be like the sore thumb in the room. So I think being able to cope this out and roll the edge of this vanity to match the spacings on the sink, I think is going to make it make more sense. 